The West 7th Street Bridge in Fort Worth, Texas, connecting the city's downtown area and its cultural district, was slated to be replaced in 2013. The Texas Department of Transportation designed the world's first precast network arch bridge to replace the existing structure, not only creating a focal point for the city, but reducing on-site construction and road closure times by approximately eight months. This bridge is a bit of a breakthrough both from an artistic standpoint and for technology. We wanted to do a precast arch because we could build the bridge quicker and stay out of the motorist way. The bridge's 12 concrete arches were fabricated in two horizontal casting beds at a construction yard near the bridge site. The arches were constructed using a complex network of rebar, embeds, and ducts before the concrete was poured. Each arch took approximately one month to construct, weighed 300 tons, and were each 163 and a half feet long, 24 feet tall, and four and a half feet wide. Upon completion, each arch was lifted from its horizontal position, rotated 90 degrees into a vertical position, and skid into storage until all arches were complete and concrete foundations were cast in place at the bridge site, overall a 10-month process. Beginning in May of 2013, arches were transported to the bridge site across the 100-year-old weight-restricted bridge, where they were then rigged, lifted, and set onto bearings before the existing bridge was demolished. New floor beams and deck panels were then set, and a concrete slab and handrails were installed, completing the bridge. Burkhalter was subcontracted by Sunt Construction to lift, rotate, and relocate the arches to storage at a construction yard during the casting process, to transport the arches to the bridge site, to rig and set the arches on their bearings, and to rig, lower, and set the floor beams over the Trinity River span. Originally, the job was bid with plans to use Burkhalter's self-erecting tower system, known as the B-Set, in a standard configuration with specialized rigging. Due to scheduling conflicts with the B-Set equipment, we developed a separate new tower system using as many existing B-Set parts as possible. For the tower itself, we used the B-Set static tower extension, designed, fabricated, and tested new top sections and bases, used existing main girders to span the required 98-foot, 10-inch span, and designed, fabricated, and tested a moment connection for the existing runway girders. All of the lifting beams were custom designed, engineered, and fabricated for this job with versatility in mind. By creating this smaller, non-self-erecting version of the B-Set, a simpler and more efficient system was created for the lift and rotation process. Throughout the entire process from concept to execution, the sensitivity of the load was crucial. With an incredible amount of stress from the internal post tensioning, if an arch was dropped, it would be equivalent to a bomb going off. Localized areas of the tie beams would actually explode, sending out concrete chunks to alleviate the compression. The rigging was designed to not only support the weight of the arches, but to protect the concrete and the strands. There were 12 different pick points on six rotation frames, each with specific load requirements. Eight rotating offset beams equalized the loads as the arch rotated from a flat to a round profile during the horizontal to vertical rotation. The runway girder was initially positioned underneath the main girders, However, by moving it above the main girders, we were able to improve headroom and provide greater stability for the lifts. Burkhalter designed and fabricated a slide system to relocate the tower between casting beds and the arches into storage with as minimal impact on the site as possible. The lift and rotation into an upright position took about four to five hours for each arch. After each arch was carefully rotated, the 500-ton tower system with rigging was skid into position over the next casting bed. The vertical arches were then skidded laterally to their storage positions using Burkhalter-designed storage stands, beams, and diagonal support frames. These stands and beams were developed specifically to accommodate lateral movement with high centers of gravity while minimizing stress into the arches. This lift, rotation, and storage process was repeated every three to four weeks as the arches were fabricated. The first arch lift took place on August 8th of 2012, 
and the final arch lift was on February 15th of 2013. Based upon preliminary site information provided by the client, we initially designed the setting portion of the arches with the B-set using a split tower configuration. Upon review of Burkhalter's detailed site survey with precise tower locations, the City of Fort Worth and our client expressed concerns relative to the schedule, site soil conditions, and the impact of trees, utilities, and the river, and asked that Burkhalter modify its plan. Burkhalter responded by developing and executing a solution to accommodate these concerns, utilizing two 400-ton Lee Bear LR1400 heavy-duty crawler cranes with superlift attachments. Using the cranes created greater versatility, simplified the process, and decreased the amount of prep work required by the client. However, it was a more labor-intensive process for us that created its own issues. Eight locations were identified where the cranes would be set up. Burkhalter coordinated movement of the cranes with the City of Fort Worth and TxDOT to the bridge site through downtown Fort Worth. Each movement required the cranes to be assembled and disassembled as quickly as possible so as to minimize the impact to the public. Burkhalter crews worked around the clock to meet the demanding schedule. For the first two lifts, one of the cranes was actually built in the middle of the street with a short road closure to assemble it, set the first two arches, and then disassemble the crane. In addition to avoiding underground utilities, the other seven setup locations brought concerns of high ground bearing loads on the area's soft clay base, especially with one crane being set in the old riverbed. These issues required that crane pads be engineered for each setup location. Each location was meticulously placed to minimize the impact on utilities, trees, and existing structures. The lifting frame for the arches was engineered, designed, fabricated, and tested to meet the special requirements of handling the sensitive arches. One concern was that the lifting point was below the center of gravity, so our lift frame needed to compensate for that and provide stability for the load. Additionally, the frame needed to be both safe and easy to tie down and remove. The first arch was set on May 10, 2013. Since the lift for the first two arches required street setup of one of the cranes, these arches were set during the day during a weekend road closure. The arches were delivered into position under the rigging and attached. Once both cranes had the weight of the arch, the SPMTs were driven out from underneath the arch and our crews worked with the client to precisely locate the arch above its bearings. We then touched the arch down and the client used jacks to adjust for plumb while our crane still carried the load. After each arch was set, diagonal bracing was installed. Arches three through eight were set during short night road closures during the week, with one being set per night. For the last four arches, the road was completely closed as they had already begun removing the decking on the opposite end of the bridge. Burkhalter set the last arch on June 11, 2013. The client initially planned to bring in modular barges and smaller cranes to set the river span 17 floor beams once the 12 arches were in place and the existing bridge was demolished. We were able to save the client significant time and money by using our equipment already on site and designing a bare paw rigging arrangement with a special lift frame to lift, lower, and set the beams. After the arches were set, we broke down one crane completely and installed 276 feet of boom into the remaining crane as it was sitting on the edge of the river and could use the extra boom to reach across the river to alleviate the need for extra cranes. As the beams were quite a bit wider than the gap between the arches, we tilted them at an angle to go between the arches, lowered them to clear the arch, then leveled and hung them from the bottom of the arches. The completed West 7th Street Bridge was reopened to traffic on October 9, 2013. It took years to plan and draw and four months to build, but the West 7th Street Bridge came in ahead of schedule and under budget. As part of this project, we expected it on a daily basis. We knew the project was advancing very quickly, so we were quite pleased that the contractor was able to open it almost a month ahead of schedule. Through collaboration with our client, the Texas Department of Transportation, and the City of Fort Worth, we were able to assist our client in completing the bridge safely, ahead of schedule, and under budget, helping to solidify their relationship with TxDOT and developing a solid partnership between Burkhalter and our client, who now looks to us as a valuable source of alternative construction solutions. Safety. 
The job was completed safely without lost time accidents by following Burkhalter's safety program, including our one-time right philosophy, as well as by following both SUNTS and TxDOT safety programs. Prior to the job, we completed a job safety analysis identifying all job hazards and hazard prevention measures. We met daily with the client and had daily safety meetings with all personnel. Proper PPE was worn at all times. The site was highly barricaded due to high traffic and spectatorship. The team was in constant communication and regular site audits were performed by our safety management. The level of Burkhalter's on-site management team and crew as well as top certification of all operators on the job, also contributed to the safety success. Innovation and ingenuity. We modified the standard B-set to create a more efficient strand jack side shift system to lift the arches and translate them from a horizontal to a vertical position. We designed, engineered, and fabricated a complex rigging system to handle the rotation with 12 pick points on six rotation frames and eight rotating offset lifting beams to equalize the loads as the arches rotated. We moved the runway girder above the main girders to improve headroom and provide greater lift stability. And we designed, engineered, and fabricated special lift frames for the arches that were quick and safe to tie down, stabilize the load since our lift point was below the CG, and were quick and easy to remove. Engineering and Planning we planned the job to protect the fragile concrete arches containing high internal stresses. The arches were each 163 and a half feet long, 24 feet tall, and four and a half feet wide. During rotation, the arches weighed 578,000 pounds plus rigging, and due to the addition of strong backs while in storage, the arches weighed 627,000 pounds plus rigging when transported in set. The lifting system was designed to be on site for 10 months, and able to withstand high winds and weathering. We coordinated all work with Sunt, TxDOT, and the City of Fort Worth. We worked through pre-scheduled road closures, poor ground conditions, a multitude of utilities, and tight contractor scheduling windows. Critical two-point lifts were made while avoiding a number of trees, buildings, the existing bridge, and even the arches themselves. All work was done in a high activity area with significant public traffic and high spectatorship. And Burkhalter's innovations assisted the client in reopening the bridge one month ahead of schedule. Limitations. This was a firm fixed price job with liquidated damages or bonuses attached to meeting the schedule. We completed the job safely, ahead of schedule, and under budget to help make the world's first precast network arch bridge construction a complete success.